This tutorial is going to show you how you can use Google Forms. This is a new version of Google Forms as of the beginning of February. So if it's uh, February 2013 or after, this is the video you want. If you've clicked on another tutorial and it doesn't look like this one, it's because it's for the old version. You're in Google Drive. You're going to go to Create just like you have for Google Docs. And under Create, you're going to pick Form. There's a couple things it talks about. Welcome to new Google Forms. You can just click Get Started or Learn More. If you want to learn more, it'll take you through some of the, their own tutorials as well. So if I click on Learn More, their tutorials right here are written tutorials. There are some video tutorials but most of them are written. The first thing you do is you name your form. So just maybe I'm making a parent survey. So I would type in here, parent survey. Now what you can do is here are the different templates for what your form is going to look like and or they also call them themes. Notice, choose, title, and theme. If you ever use Google Forms in the past, there's less themes, which makes me a little sad. There used to be 97. Maybe eventually they will have more. The default theme is just a plain theme. If you want something f more interesting looking, all you have to do is click on it, and whichever one has the blue box around it is the theme that you're going to use. So I think I'm going to pick, pick <clears throat> this fish theme. You can uncheck the box if you don't want this shown at the beginning for a new form and you can pick it later, but if you don't, if you want to see your theme options in the first place, leave this check box. Then you click OK. You won't see the form in its theme version. The theme will say right here, Theme Fish. Here's the name. You do not have to put anything in the description. If you want to type something in the description like the thing in description might be some form of instructions related to the parent survey or if it's a quiz, any pertinent information you might need you could put in here like uh, please fill out this survey by March 1st. Okay? Then you get to your question section. Untitled question. Do you have to name the question? You might say, well, why and do I want to name the question? Well, this is actually where you're putting the question in. So, um, when do you like to come for parent-teacher conferences? Okay, so here's where you put the question, question mark. Any help task, if you need more information for them to know how to answer the question, um, a link to a website if it's something for students that you want them to be able to go look up if it's a quiz question. And then here's the different types of questions. Text questions is if it's just a short answer. So think of text a short answer. Paragraph text, a long answer. Multiple choice, multiple choice. Check boxes means they can check multiples from a list. Choose from a list is just a straight list. Scale and grid. Scale is like on a scale of 1 to 10, and you can put the different scales, 1 being least satisfied and 5 being the greatest thing ever. And a grid, it's a little complicated. We'll talk about the grid. So text question, just basic answer. When do you prefer to come for parent-teacher conferences? Maybe this is better for multiple choice. You could say before school, click in the next box, after school and it'll keep adding as you click in the next box it'll keep adding in other options or you could click in other and notice it gives them an answer if you have too many boxes all you have to do is click on the X and get rid of the different boxes so excuse my spelling and when you're done you click done if you want the question to be a required question, you check off this box. And that way they will not be able to turn in the survey without answering this question. When you're done with the question, you can click Done. Your completed question appears here. 
The asterisk means it's required, and if for some reason you needed to edit the question, if you put your cursor up here, click, near, click your cursor somewhere in the question, you can get the editing button, so you can click on edit and make any changes, and if you make changes, done. Or you could duplicate the question, or if you don't want the question, you can delete the question. So in order to see those sections, you need to just click on the question and it'll come back up. Okay. <clears throat> when you're ready to add another question, you simply click Add Item. And what type of question do you want? Which doesn't mean you can't pick another one. I'm not going to show you text and paragraph text because they're pretty self-explanatory. So to remember, text is a short answer, paragraph text is if you want a long answer. Here's check boxes. So for example, pick your favorite foods. Okay? And this allows you to pick as many as you want. So option one, lobster, pizza, ice cream. If you want another, you can add another. And once again, you can make it a required question or just say done. And with this one, they can check off, you can check off multiple answers. Add another item, choose from a list. What day do you want to volunteer? Here's choose from a list. And remember, if you decide you want to change the type of question, you can always do it right here. So we could say Wednesday. Thursday, Friday. And once again, when you're done with the question or make it a required question, hit done. <clears throat> Once you're done and see with this one, you can only pick one day. So if you want something to have multiple, multiple responses, you pick the checkbox. This is just choose from a list, so it makes a drop-down menu. The answer part right here, what is this confirmation page? This is what someone gets when they submit the question. So by default, it's going to say your response has been recorded. If you want to say thanks for participating, you know, remember open house night, whatever you want. This is what the people are going to see when they hit submit. Okay, there's a couple things. Show link to submit another response. Publish and show a link to the results of the form. Allow responders to edit their responses after submitting. These are choices you can give to the people who are responding. Okay, so want them to be able to submit another response, you can show them the link that will take them right back to the form. Okay, if you want them to see the results of this form, and we'll get to that, you can check that off as well. And it even says right here, if I can get that box to come up again, we'll talk about it. If you are doing something with students and you want them to be able to edit their responses, like you are going to use the form and they're going to keep updating their information, you want to check this box off. Or you could have none of them checked. This is how you now send the form to people. But we'll get to that in a minute. There are a few things that are different if you ever use the old version of Google Forms. There used to be up here, uh, one of the menu choices was Forms, and it's how you saw the live form. Because I just want to be clear about this. This link up here is not the link that you share with people to see the form. See how it says edit the end? This is the link to get you to the edited version of the form, this, so you could edit, okay? If you want to view the live form, which is what people are going to see, the one you want them to see, you click on View Live Form. And what it will take you to is you'll see your form with the fish. So here's the live form. This link, when you're in the view of the form you want people to see, this is the link that you can send to people to get them to take this form. 
When you're in it, you can go back to edit this form if you need to make changes. So here's my first question. Here's my second question. Notice the ones I made required has the asterisk. And here's the submit button. If I need to edit the form, I can click on edit this form. Another way to get the link and to share the form with other people is with the send form button that appears here or appears here. And when you click send form, this is the link that you share with people. Now, if you want to share it on Facebook or Twitter and Google+, you can click on these. If you want to send the form via email, you can put people's email addresses in here. And if they're in your contacts, you can do this. And it'll include the form in the email, or you could uncheck the box, and they'll just get the link to the form. So if you want to send it via email and you know the people's email addresses, you can type it right in. <clears throat> you can also put a message in it that will go along with the email if you want to. So the ways of sharing the form are sending it via email, or you can simply click on this link and copy and paste this link into an email. So if you don't have everybody's email addresses or you want to post it on a website, this is the link that you would use. If you know how to embed and what embed codes are, and we won't get into embed codes unless you know what they are, you can click on embed and here's the embed code. And this is how you can embed the actual form into a website. If your form is really long, I don't think you should do that because then you'll have a really, really long addition to your web page. I would just put the link. If you're not sure about this whole embed piece and you want some more information, Email me or send me a message and let me know. Also on Send Forms, here's where you can share it. It used to be sharing, used to be up in the corner, and I don't know why they changed it. But if you want to share the form, and this is the editing part, not sharing the form for people to fill it out. So if you're working with another teacher and you want her to be able to edit this form as well, this is where you do the sharing features of the form. It's the same way as we talked about with sharing a document. So those are the basics of creating your form. Let's go back and review. Also a few things about the interface. Here's your theme. We'll talk about responses in, on, in the next video. Here's how you view the live form and go back and click up here for editing. On the menu, you can also do share here. You can also send form from here as well. Okay? You can also view live form, change your theme here. Here's another place when you can insert questions as well. So just remember what you're doing. Review the tutorial when you need to.